What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 65 of Convos on the Pedicab. We're here with my boy Christian Ammons, his up-and-coming young, brash MMA fighter. He's the number three-ranked flyweight in Arkansas and the number two-ranked amateur fighter for um, for flyweights in the southwestern United States. Christian, thanks for coming on, man. We're glad we can make this happen. Yeah, bro. Glad to have you. Dude, I just saw your last fight. What a, uh, what a war. Yeah, tough fight. Tough fight. How, how do you feel? So this guy, like, so how, how do you feel during this fight? I felt uh, really confident. <clears throat> I was in really good shape. Uh, it was a back-to-back -back fight, so it was, uh, it was super hard on the body. Because you, you fought like two weeks prior, right? Yeah. So how did, how was that like? It was good, but I, I needed to test myself. You know, I needed to push the limits because uh, in this game, you never know when, when a call will come. So I, I want to be able to take these opportunities, and I'm healthy so I can fight, you know, every weekend. How old are you? 21. Dude, what, when did you turn 21? Uh, November. Oh, shit, so you can have a beer now. Yeah. Damn, dude. So how much did you party after that fight was over? We went to uh, Northgate and uh, College Station, and uh, we had a good time. I saw Ricky <laughs> made a video of him throwing up. Bro, the van. <laughs> the van. <laughs> the van. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Before we uh, go any further, um, some of you guys might be wondering why I'm wearing this mask. And it's because I we have him yeah we we have these new variants of of COVID coming on and Christian actually has another fight, um, August 29th and I'm I'm just wearing this to keep we Christian can't safe. Risk it. I don't want him to get COVID um, before his next bout. So we, we you know we care so much about safety on this on this podcast. Yeah. But anyway, let's uh, get back to what, what this, the story was. Yeah. So the van actually yeah it was uh, it was a great time we. Uh we had a um, a lot of memories were made on the trip, and uh, and we took a head in the in the meantime. So it, it was a good time, dude. So um, how did you feel during that fight? Because I was I watched that fight, and the kid that you fought was really tough. Yeah. And you, like I, I mean, it was a war of a fight. But I'll be honest, man, it was a fight that you were losing yeah. until the very end. And it was a fight, even though you landed some very good shots. It was a fight where you were clearly just getting rocked. Yeah. Um. How did, how did you feel? Do you remember how you felt during that fight while this was going on? Yeah, I, I do. I do remember, like, you know, there's, like, flashes in the fight. Um, I did get hit with a lot of right hands. and um, But the, that fight really showed me that I was a fighter, you know? Yeah. That fight, like, showed me that this is what I, I'm meant to do. This is what I want to do. And I had to overcome a lot of adversity in that fight. And I learned a lot about myself. What did you learn? I learned that I'm a dog. I learned <laughs> that I can keep the pace for nine minutes, and I'm trying to develop it for 15 minutes. And, and you learn that you just don't care if you get hit in the yeah, face. You, and just, I, you just don't give a shit. I you don't, just don't care. care. I don't care. And I know that I'm a finisher. And we'll, it, we don't fight for rounds. We fight. We have nine minutes to finish you. We'll get the finish with one second left or one second in the fight. And that's, I mean, that, that, that is like the right attitude. Um, did you black out at all? Or have you had any – like, because I – like, look um, – You've had more fights than I. I've had. I had one MMA fight. I had a few like amateur boxing fights, and I had a couple back in like 2011, 2012 when I was in New York. And I'll tell you this: like, I don't remember any of them. Yeah. Right. Like, like those the three amateur fights I had boxing. The only reason I was able to remember any of those fights is because I had it on film. Mm -hmm. So if somebody asked me to recount like what, what happened, happened during, during these the fights, fight? like no, I wouldn't be able to recount anything because everything went black. Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel that way when you're doing your fights? Completely. I'm still at that stage. I'm trying to get over that and so I can just remain 100% controlled in there and aware and be awake. But I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I got hit. That first right hand that hit me. You didn't remember what the fuck was going on. I did like, not. No, I was yeah, just fighting this You dude. were just fighting. Like, yeah. You were probably not even – you probably could have had a mild concussion yeah, during sure. that fight, not knowing what was happening, swinging and fighting. Like, And if somebody asked you to recount that fight without the video, no you would not be able to recount anything about that fight yeah, no at way. all. I had one um, amateur boxing fight like years ago, right? Um, and <clears throat> this was like the second fight I had, and they put me up a weight class because I was doing 152. I was like a lot smaller, a lot skinnier back when I was like in my like early mid 20s, right? And um, I thought I was gonna fight 152, and they give you like these weight allowances for these like club shows. Mm -hmm. And they put me against a 165 pounder. So I, they just put me in the wrong weight just class. I fought a guy ass, that was dude. like 10 pounds heavier than me. That's the worst. And within like the first 20 seconds, he just clocked me with a right hand or a left hook. I don't even remember what he hit me with. But I do remember that after that, I had no idea what the fuck was going on yeah. at all. And um, the fight wound up being like a split decision that I lost. 
and people were like, dude, that was a great fight, man. You guys went at it, whatever it was, right? But I don't remember anything that happened during that fight whatsoever. Yeah. And it was just, like, that whole fight was just black. So I was wondering, like, have you felt that type of feeling? Yeah, yet? it was. Uh, I, like, there, I was definitely awake. You know, like I could, I could see shots coming. I was, I was in the fight, but there were just flashes. You know, like you were in another, lo- you were in another place mentally. Yeah, for sure. Right. Like, my, like truly, like my reps took over. Reps took over. Yeah, it was all unconscious. There was no conscious thinking. Right? Yeah, my body like, was on the Because like you could like watch somebody fight and you'd be like, oh man, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? <laughs> if people don't understand that when you're in a fight, you're someone's trying. hitting you, the adrenaline is so crazy. They, you lose the ability to think, and it really all comes down when you're doing a sport like this. It just comes down to reps and nice. being able to, like, be exhausted and, and function and deal with, like, um, operating on a plane of exhaustion. Mm-hmm. And especially in fighting in front of your grandma and fighting in front of your mom, like, you're going to black out. You're going to have to See, I was always deep. scared to tell people that I, like, when I did my boxing fights, I never even told anybody that fights because I was, like, so scared of having people watch mm. me that I just kept that shit quiet and, then, and posted videos after it was over, yeah, you know? Like, yeah. I, I didn't even want to tell Make sure anybody. you won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or at least it was, like, competitive yeah. or something like that. Nah, you know? I'm the complete opposite. Yeah. I want hundreds of my friends at the fight. I want all my family. I love the pressure. It makes me perform better. I, I see that. You talk a lot of shit, too. I do. I like to talk shit. Dude, you're like you're gonna be like the new Conor McGregor, man. You, yeah, you get mother, you get in people's heads, which is fucking hilarious. Yeah, like, they don't like it. It's a, it's a very like uh, an uncomfortable situation face to face with someone. So I like to make it even more uncomfortable for them. You know? Do people don't just do people don't just start like laughing at you when you say this stuff? Because no. some of the stuff you say is just, it's just fucking funny. It funny. Like it is I, funny. I like <laughs> say like uh, Alexander quotes and like you know I Alexa- watch. Yeah. Like, you know Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> I told this one guy I was like, only the dead know the end of war. And he was like, what are you even saying right now? And I was like, dude, I don't even know. Like, that's just my, that's just what I say to people. I just want to get in their the head. Ba- the I want them to think. Because if they're, if they're thinking, they're not fighting. Hey, it's a good, yeah. And also, it, it um when you talk shit, like, pre-fight, it motivates you to have to train harder because you're like, oh, like, oh I'm talking so much me. shit. <laughs> I'm talking so much shit to this guy. He's probably wants to whoop my ass, so now I have to be my best. Like, it's yeah. like a motivating, like... It's motivating, right? To yeah, like, it is. Like, it, for, it forces you to be your best because you can't just talk a bunch of shit and get your ass kicked. Nah, because then it looks real bad. It looks really bad, <laughs> it so you have, no, you have no choice but to train really hard. Yeah. Yeah, you got to dog it out. You got to dog it out. You got to dog, gotta it, dog out. it out. Um, my, my favorite moment that I've had that I've seen was the way in your second fight with that fucking kid from Dallas. Ah, Colton Loud. Good yeah, guy. that guy. was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. We uh, we were talking trash on, like, Instagram and Twitter <laughs> yeah, and was... Facebook. I was tagging him in pictures. And... Uh, and honestly, like he's he's a very talented fighter, so I had I had to get under his skin. You know, I can't just let him come in here and think it's just a fight. You know, I had a it's more than that. Dude, you he was flexing and you came in front of him yeah. to start flexing in front of we him knew, and just, like, pushing. We knew we knew from his past weigh ins that he gets a long, long, long stance in his weigh in. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to shove past that hand and get off in his face. I wanted to smell his pussy. That's what I wanted. That, did you smell it? I did. What did it smell like? It didn't smell good. Oh man, it didn't smell good. <laughs> it didn't smell good. But that was a fight, though. That that was a fight. That was a good that fight, was a too. Fight. That was an eye-opener for, as well. Um, that was uh, – I learned a lot about myself in that fight as well. Um, yeah, that kid was s- same skill level, same same everything. We just had to go in there. And you guys are going to meet – I feel like you guys are going to meet each other a lot. Yeah, we'll you're meet gonna definitely. Pros. You're definitely going to um, – that's not the last time you're going to see him. No, for sure. Um, and he's he's in the same region as me, so we'll, we'll fight in Fury or we'll run into each other in the gym. You, you might f- f- fight each other for a title. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, hopefully. You guys seem to get along now, right? Yeah, like, yeah, cool. yeah, you're cool. Yeah, yeah. we talk on Instagram. <laughs> we just make cool fun guy. of each other. Yeah, and yeah, just we like... just talk shit. Like, <laughs> he posts a picture of like him landing a head kick, and I'm like, you didn't land that head kick. <laughs> I blocked that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good times. That's funny. Um, what was I going to say? So what made you want to be a fighter? So I've always been a competitor. I played soccer growing up my whole life. I love soccer. And I, I even went to uh, college for soccer. And I uh, ran into a gym in Dallas, um, Guy Mesger's gym. Okay. And just walked into their class, just did a boxing class. I didn't have gloves. He let me borrow some gloves. Just hit the bag. And I always watch UFC, and my uncle like always tried to put me on UFC. And something in my mind always said, like, you're going to be a fighter. You're going to be more like you're going to be an athlete. Like, you know what I'm saying? And uh, when soccer didn't work out, I broke my foot. And you broke your foot? Yeah, I didn't I, know that. I thought that you just like 
had horrible grades and didn't care about school and just that was it. That was it. But it started with the uh, it started with the broken foot. When did you break your foot? I broke my foot um, two years ago. And was that in college or in high school? In college. Okay. And um, when I broke my foot, I just got real lazy. You know, I was smoking a bunch of pot. I was just eating a bunch of food. Got I got, they got I that Chick Fil A, bro. Dude. I got all the way <laughs> you got up that to one ninety. <laughs> what? Can you believe that? How tall are you? Five seven. Dude, so you're a fatty. I was a fat ass. I'm gonna show you pictures later. It was uh, gross. Dude, what? It was gross. Holy shit. Yeah, okay. and I would look at myself and I'd be like, bro, you were gross. You know what I'm saying? And so my foot healed. I got my cast off. That's when I walked in the lines or uh, Guy Mesgers. And, yeah. And um, and I called my mom and I, I told her about school. I told her that I didn't wanna um, do it anymore. Do it anymore. And I told her I wanted to compete in MMA. I wanted to to fight. And she probably thought you were fucking crazy. She, did. she was she like, went off wow. She's like, you're going to come home and you're going to get a job and you're going to go to the military. Like oh, that, God. that was going to be my route. And well, yeah. And so she finally, so as I moved home, uh, I started training. I started competing. Where were you training at first? I was training at a gym called triple threat jujitsu in Marvel. Marvel Fall. Fall. Okay. That's yeah, where that guy Mario, Mario trains. Mario yeah. Fonseca. Mario's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went there once during the lockdown just like to get out of Austin and stuff like yeah, that. That's a beautiful gym. It's a nice gym. Yeah. It. Is he still there or yeah, is he, he just, is still there. I thought he was like at fight he, factory now or something like that. He goes there and cross trains, but he's actually one of the head instructors at triple. Threat. We should go there one day and like, dude, we should take a trip out there, go train there and then like go fishing like yes, in the daytime dude. or, go, or like, go there in the afternoon roll and then just spend the day going fishing out there. Cause I went to Marble. I, I live only 45 minutes away from Marble Falls. Okay. Like I'm on 290 and William Cannon, and um, how pretty is that drive? Out beautiful, there? I love it. It's the best. The hill country, especially if you like smoke a bull or something ah, like that, or best. yeah. Um, I don't know. I heard that you're not doing that right now. Yeah, I'm actually sober this. Yeah, month. good, good for yeah. you. Um, so am I. Nice. But uh, what what you gonna call it? Like, I caught a fucking huge bass just right by the um, right. You know where like that public pool that pool is, like where the parks department, the park, like the little park is at, right near the um, what's that fucking restaurant? Call three. That, that, there's that restaurant right by the water, on Marble Falls. Um, uh, Chili's River City Grill. River City Grill. Yeah. Right by the, like me like within walking distance of River City Grill. There's like a there's like Lake Marble Falls right yeah. or Lake LBJ. Mm -hmm. And okay, I just across that bridge. Yeah, I just caught like a giant bass and like a perch like a couple weeks ago. When I was yeah. out there. You can go out there and fish. You'll catch anything, <clears throat> man. It's Dude, it crazy. is a great area. It is great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Out it, there. It's fucking awesome. So yeah, if you ever want to do that, like let's. I'll, no, I'll plan a trip. It. Let's plan a trip out there. Do some jujitsu and then just fish yeah. the rest of the day. Yeah, I would love it. And one of my sponsors, he wakes you. They do uh, boat chartering, and uh, we can honestly go on the boat, take you wakeboarding. Let's do that, do dude. We night. have to. Come on. What are yeah, we waiting let's for? Go. Let's Let do. It. Let's. Uh, I'm free next week. Like I like I said, I usually Monday or, or Tuesdays. I'm getting my day to decompress and not do anything because of how hard I work yeah. on the cab. So that would be fucking yeah, that'd money. Be that'd be let's money. Yeah, let's do it. Um, but anyway, we were talking about triple threat jujitsu. So you started triple threat. Yeah, started triple threat and. And uh, yeah. I would go tr cross train and burn it, Texas at Mad Dog. Um, What's that? It's a, it's a super small MMA gym. Uh, they're a weightlifting gym, and they do MMA in the back. Were the guys good? The guys were good. There were a lot of scrappy MMA fighters in there, and they would just go there and just beat each other up. Yeah. And um, so then I got my. I told my mom I I found Tenth Planet Austin on Instagram. Yeah. You know I loved it. I loved the Instagram. I saw all the stuff and. Uh, I was like, I need to come to this gym. Like, I have to find a way. Okay. My mom was like, okay, find a job in Austin. Find a job near Austin. You'll just commute, and then eventually you'll save enough money to get an apartment. So I, I found a hotel job. I drove to 10th Planet, and, like, I just drove, like, five miles around 10th Planet. I was like, I'm going to find a job hella close to the gym so I can just go straight from the okay. to the gym. <clears throat> so I started working at this hotel, uh, the Hampton Inn. I was a, um, what do they call where you're, like, a, the night front desk? I don't know, the fucking bellhop or whatever? Well, yeah, whatever, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, I so I was just pretty much chilling there watching the desk. Yeah. And uh, I would train like, during the day, and then I would go home and sleep. And I finally saved en enough money to get an apartment. I uh, met my uh, roommates off Craigslist and just bummed it out and just trained. Are you still living there? I'm not. No. Uh, I actually uh, I moved out of there, and I got hooked up with uh, – I'm living with my – Head MMA coach, You're living with Cody, right? Cody Hofstadter and my strength and conditioning coach. You're living with Nick Cody there. and Nick? Yeah. Dude, so my whole life is dude. your whole life, like you have literally two dads that are probably making sure that you're on, that, that you probably have two grown ass men two who are on your ass constantly, right? Is that all what it day? Is? They just, and they're constantly just spitting, like yelling at you. 
putting stuff in my ear and just like feeding stuff in my head. It's like you're back home living with your parents, but yeah. different parents. Different parents. <laughs> different it's like level. MMA parents. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. You better not fuck up or else you just get your I'll, ass beat I'll come home with like a bag and Nick's like, what's in that bag? I'm like, I gotta hide my M&Ms. <laughs> yeah, right. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's and hard. Then Cody said, yeah, like you have no choice but to fucking train yeah. your ass. I gotta train hard. No missed sessions. Can't be bringing girls over. Nah. I mean, you probably could do yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah, like, definitely. But if it's like hella late and I got strength and conditioning at 7 in the morning. Can't do that. Not a good look. Can't fuck around. Nah. Cannot fuck around. Can't. I, I kind of see why you don't want a pedicab. Yeah. It's um, like, I have a very intense schedule and a very strict schedule. I understand. I understand. I, um, I've been trying to get you on, into this job because yeah. I think that like... This is like an almost an ideal job for being a fighter because it you is. pick your own schedule. You just work twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, you make probably. Are you working right now? I'm not. No. How are you making? How do you make a living? So I have a lot of sponsors and a lot of uh, family support. Family support. Really? That's yeah. interesting. So what do you? You like a rich kid? <laughs> no, <laughs> not a rich kid. <laughs> like no. So uh, a lot of I have a lot of family who I have like an uncle who owns a business. And my best friend Bryce, he owns a business. And okay. My best friend Nick, he owns a business. So I have like a bunch. You have a lot of best friends. A lot of best friends. A lot, a lot of, of friends. <laughs> Usually when, when they say your best friend is one person. Yeah. yeah. Nah, dude, I got, my, <laughs> yeah. I got a whole list of best friends. A lot of good homies. Bro, All like right. we, we grew up on this dream, bro. Like I was telling them, like I wanted to be a fighter, like yeah. ever since I was playing soccer. And like now that they, they're finally able to support me financially, like it, it's a lot, you know, it, it does mean a lot. Like I'm, I'm definitely like super grateful to be in the position that I am in. Well, okay, so that's good that, that you you get your bills and your expenses covered so you can just train all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason I wanted you to do this is because this way you could – you don't have to slave away at some bullshit job to, yeah. like, be some broke fighter. You yeah. Know? Like, a lot of people, they do this job, you know – like, listen, man, you're a great fighter, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you have a lot of potential. I think you have a lot of, like, the mental ability. You have mentally what it takes to go – far in the sport i really i see you train i see how hard you work i see how you handle adversity in your fights mm -hmm. um i think you're extremely marketable i think you have a lot of what it takes to go very far in mma that being said though you mathematically have a better chance of being struck by lightning than you do of making it to the ufc yeah and you have an um and that's especially true with actually getting real money when you have a ufc fight because you got yeah. ufc fighters they make it all the way and they only make ten thousand dollars a fight yeah. and then when you pay your your train your training partners your coaches the whatever you know your expenses your manager you walk away with like three grand after yeah, six months of, like you're getting robbed blind and there's a lot of fighters they have all these great qualities they got what it takes and they, they they're 40 years old with yeah. nothing to show right so i'm just like i just don't want you to be i want nah. you to have something to show for this no matter what happens mm -hmm, for sure and and the money necessarily isn't made with the contracts and with being in the ufc the money now, dude, the money is made with sponsors. The money is made with with getting the stuff on your own. If you can build up your, your name and, and your, your business, I'm a business. Like, I'm a private You are, contractor. but yeah, I'm in the same way, man. I'm my own brand, too, with the pedicure, yeah. my podcast, with my songs, with everything. Like, and, I'm, and you get it. You, you have to advertise it. You have to advertise yeah. yourself. Honestly, you're probably better at selling yourself than I am because you have a bunch of businesses that are financing your dream. Yes. I have this one guy named Adam Lowy, phenomenal lawyer, if you've ever been hurt or injured in an accident. Call that man, yeah. you know, who's done a lot of really awesome stuff with the, the cabs that we have, and, I've, and he's... Um, put his at, his name on the cab that I bought, which is amazing, and I think it, it's just the start of something. Yeah. But you're getting a bunch of people to mm -hmm. really sponsor you, and, and like, what what have you done to do that? Like, how have, how have you done that? I I reach out, man. I I I play a game where I try to get told no ten times a day. I want to get told ten. If I ask a hundred people, maybe three people will give me fifty bucks. That's one hundred fifty dollars right there. That's a day's work. Dude, you, you'd be so good at this job. <laughs> Fuck, you would be so you'd be so fucking good at this job because that is literally what patty cabbing is. Yeah? That literally, Just yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know how many times people tell me to go fuck myself when I try to ask for a ride? They're like, shit. <laughs> like, do you know how many times I get told no and I'm like, yo, you want a ride? Hey, get in. We're fighting socialism. <laughs> hey, I'm wearing this mask to keep protect you from the virus. Hey, sir, would you and your, and your wife like a romantic pedicab ride? I want to let you know all proceeds go to fight communism. You know how many times I get told no, we're taking an Uber, we're doing this, no, get us, get back in the Bro, minute. but how many, many times do you get told yes? That, that's enough, right? But what I'm exactly. saying is that, like, what you just said is literally the perfect attitude. You just literally embodied the perfect attitude of what it takes to actually be really successful. In the pedicab. Yeah, dri driving this little bike ground. 
Well, I'm just letting you know. I mean, if you're good and like if you're good with where you're at and, and your main focus is fighting and you have a routine that makes you really comfortable with where you're at accomplishing your dream, you should focus on doing that and not deviate from something that you find is going to make you really successful. Mm-hmm. But just understand that you should put this in your back pocket. For sure. Put this in your back pocket because there might come a time where like you get you get like hurt or you get like a nagging injury. Just like a no, like you break your nose. Yeah, or some yeah like you shit. break your nose or some stupid thing happens to you where you can't take a fight for mm-hmm. a while or you get a medical suspension. Yeah. Let's say you six get months. like a 6 month medical suspension. Yeah. Well, guess what you can do for 6 months while you're on medical suspension? Grind, make money. Yeah. And you'd be really good at this. So I'm, I just want you to know that this is something that you have an opportunity to do. It's a pretty easy job to get. Um, as long as you're not a criminal, as long as you're not like a horrible driver, as long as you didn't do anything really bad, you can do this job. I got Emilio getting his fingerprints tomorrow to, yeah. to try to do this. Like, this is this is gonna be this this is something that you should have in your back pocket. And just with your attitude, and your mindset, the fact that you like talking shit to people, I do. and you don't seem phased by chaos. Like I've seen your fights. You don't like you thrive in a chaotic, I live in the chaos. You thrive yeah. in a chaotic environment. Like I thrive in a chaotic mm-hmm. environment. And in, 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 in a lot of ways, man, I'm like I've been trying to push you to do this because I feel like in a way you're kind of a little bit of a miniature version of myself. When I was, like, younger. Yeah, you could see yourself in me. A little bit, yeah. I, I think that you're actually um, doing, a lo- in many ways, a lot better off than I was. And you're a lot more together mentally than I was when I was your age. But I see parts of myself in you. And I'm just like, damn, I wish somebody, when I was that age, told me about this. Because I think it could have changed my life a lot. Like, I could have my own house by now, you know? Yeah. Um. So that, that that's kind of why I like, want you to do this. Or just, just put it in your back pocket, man. Because what you just said... Hey man, if I get told I try to get ten no's before I hear a yes, bro. That is you, petty cab, yeah. That's literally this job. That that's that's something where you you don't have to be you're not gonna have like whatever financial problems you may have in the future, you, you won't have it. Like you're gonna be good. Be sick. No matter what no matter what happens to your MMA career, that keep that attitude. Do not ever lose that attitude, Christian. Okay. Seriously, don't lose that attitude. No, I won't. It's uh it's gotten me here so far, you know. Yeah. And um yeah, so uh, just just getting told no. That's it's a, you got to get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, you got a girlfriend? I don't. You trying to get a girlfriend? No, I, I really just want to fall. I just want to marry the game right now. Jiu-Jitsu's you know? your girlfriend. Yeah, no, no. She, she, MMA. she fucks all your friends. Yeah. She just. <laughs> she does. It's tough. It's a tough relationship. <laughs> Yo, you just you give everything and you get nothing back. Nothing back. Just heartache and beatings. And, and and sad nights, <laughs> sad lonely nights. <laughs> but you get fucking yoked though. Yeah. Dude, you ever post like shirtless selfies? On like, I'm sure you post like some shirtless pics on fucking social media, right? I mean, like if once in a blue, right? Like some post workout pics, right? No, like, like not if uh, not just me, no. But like if with it's, a squad, like, if it's squad up, fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. Wh- what gen? Like the majority of the compliments you receive are from what gender? <laughs> male yeah <laughs> tough <laughs> fucking grown tough. ass grown ass there's like every once in a while you'll get lucky with like that. one shit listen Some confidence when i like, when i go. um got ready for my one mma fight with that i won which by the way i'm undefeated in hey. amateur anyway what i'm one saying though done. like i was yoked though right like i had like an eight pack like i best shape of your life best shape of my life by far right and me and my homeboy like we had um we were like three weeks out two three weeks after our fight and we posted it like we're like yo we're ready to get these tickets and both of us were shirtless after we just trained and hey. you know, did some conditioning and it was like 20 it was like on facebook right and there was just 20 different compliments and it was like 90 percent were from fucking dudes just like just all yeah, grow yo you're looking fucking bro. swole bro damn dude <laughs> you're looking, yeah you shredded man you're Hold. like bro this feels good but not what i wanted to hear yeah it's like <laughs> the, the goal is you got to be in such good shape that the only compliments you get are from other men mm-hmm. that's that's the goal that is the goal that's the goal that's what I'm reaching. Yeah, I think you're going to make it. You're, yeah. you're only going to get compliments from other people. Hey, that's men. all that's hitting me up so far. I'm like, tough, man. <laughs> yeah, tough. That's all right. <laughs> Put that in your dating profile, bro. Yeah. I look so good that only men compliment my physique. Yeah. <laughs> only men compliment. <laughs> it's not a flex. <laughs> it was the truth, though. That's what it is. It's the life. It's it's part of the grind, man. Um, do you remember when I first met you, what I told you, though? Mm-mm. So you were living. You, you had a different living situation. Yeah. You were living with like, what was your living situation like uh, before Nick and, and Cody? I was like I said, I was I moved into the that apartment complex I found on Craigslist. Yeah, and bro, these dudes were I don't even know what they were doing in the room, but they were doing some crazy shit. They they would come out all sweaty and shit, and it was just like with I'd each be, other. No, 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 no. He would come out all sweaty and like I, food was missing from the fridge, 
And it, it just wasn't. I like some fucking crackhead roommate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't the ideal living Lizard, situation. Yeah. And then when I saw on Facebook that Gabe uh, had a, an extra room, I, dude, I jumped on that opportunity ASAP. And that's when I met Nick. I didn't even met Nick till then. And so I just Nick's a good coach. I feel bad coach. that I'm not able to come because of the fucking schedule. And yeah, stuff. it is I, tough. You got to work around that or like try to work out. I, I got to talk to him. I got to get his number. I, I, I got to talk to him. Yeah. I'm lazy and pretty you bad. need that. That's so. That's why we're able to stay healthy and stay so active. It's because of the strength and conditioning. We're so durable. Because and it's also why you can take so much damage in your fight and be okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, we get pushed to the limits every day, and dude, like just working out with your your teammates, working out. Well, it's with fun your with homies. the group because I, I don't like working out or doing conditioning. Nah, at all. I fucking hate it. It's it's boring when you do it by yourself. It sucks. But when you see someone like do like ten pull ups, you're like, I gotta do ten pull ups. And you're all making jokes together yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's that that camaraderie. There's like the brotherhood of having like. Yeah, and Emilio's always talking shit. He's always like, Oh, I bench more than you. I'm like, Bro, you're a fucking heavyweight. Yeah, you're like 250 pounds. <laughs> Dude, that guy moves like a lightweight. He does. That guy is Bro, fucking good. I see him cold. sparring with Andrew Craig, like holding his own, like spar. I'm like, fuck. Bro, yeah, he's Emilio's top notch. Top notch. That guy could go far. Bro, that guy could go so Holy far. Shit. He, dude, he's already like number one ranked heavyweight with one fight in the state of Texas. With one fight. He murked the number fight. one with one ranked fight. heavyweight with one fight. With one fight. Knocked him out. With one fight, blue belt level jujitsu. Jesus Christ. Imagine if that guy started like getting good at jujitsu. How yeah. good that guy he would be. Yeah, Holy exactly. Shit. He's just a wrestler. He's just a wrestler who's just really good. Well, really good striking. He's, He's like good a everywhere. He's an MMA fighter. He's an MMA fighter. He is a dog. That guy. And he's such a nice guy, too. Such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. Holy shit. <laughs> such a nice guy. But what, what were we talking about? Yeah, so you were living in this crack house. Yeah. And I remember we were at the gym. It was like in the summer when things were like half closed. And I was talking to you, and you're like, dude, I need a job. I need to figure out, like, how to make money. I need to figure out, like, a bunch that. of shit. And I was just like... You're like, bro, I'm getting my shit together. I got you. No, no, this wasn't even before the cab. Oh. Before the pedicab stuff. This was in the summer. The first time I met you, I gave you this whole lecture like I was your dad. And I was just like... I was like, listen, man, like, how old are you? You're like, I'm 20 years old. I'm like, dude, you can't even have a beer yet. Just, do you want to be a fighter? Then don't worry about anything except for fighting. Yeah. Just only focus on that and whatever you need, like whatever money, whatever like money uh, you're worried about, whatever financial stuff you're worried about, as long as you can pay your bills, just focus on fighting. If you just focus on this one thing and just do it until you can't do it anymore or until you just want to move on, the money will come. Remember yeah. I told you that? Yeah. Yeah. And then here you are actually doing it. And then now you're over here trying to get me to do pedicab. Like a fucking asshole. <laughs> like an asshole. Like a fucking asshole. <laughs> Tell I know. me two different things. I know. Bro. Such, what do you want from me, shit. Stringer? <laughs> Jesus. No, nah, hey, enough. hey, do when do it when you're do it when you're ready. Do it, do it when you're ready. No, I'm definitely like you said. You just opened my eyes with like the suspension thing or like a broken nose. Like this would definitely be like a great opportunity to have like back pocket. Put it in your back pocket. Just get get. And you know what? You can still get the paperwork done and get the fingerprints and get the driving record and do all that stuff now. So this way, let's say you get a medical suspension after your fight in August. I'm not pushing that on you because yeah. I'm sure you're going to fucking I'm going to start you first. You're going to fucking murk you. But let's just say something happens. You're in a fucking dog fight. You're in a war. Shit happens. I mean, the commission, like, they could have given you a medical suspension for they that fight. They definitely could have. They could have easily given you a medical I'm suspension for that. Didn't. Yeah, they they. There was like no doctor checkup after that fight, which is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, like, oh, but they could have good. very easily given you a medical suspension after that fight. They could have given you a medical suspension after your fight with Colton. Yeah, nah, Colton hit like a bitch. He uh, and he didn't even <laughs> hit me actually. <laughs> like we were wrestling the whole time. He still caught you with some good. Yeah, you're right. He did, but he caught you with some good shots. Though. Yeah, he did. But he, he his boxing was good. Bro, but these twenty fivers, bro, they do not. They don't hit that hard. They don't hit that hard. They feel yeah. like little little, little pill things. hands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yo, but anyway, the the point is though, you could get a medical suspension. Mm -hmm. It's very it's possible. Like, and it's something you should just have in your back pocket. Um, I mean, I'm not throwing that at you, but it's something you could have in your back pocket. And if you if that does happen to you, this is a great way to pass the time while you have a medical suspension. And dude, you know how busy um things are when the fall starts. Your fight's on August 29th, right? Yeah. Okay. You know how good September and October are? Busy? Yeah. D d get this shit before those times. Yeah, that's a good idea. And, and do you train on Sundays? No. So then why not just go ride a, ride this pedicab on Saturday night? Go make some money. Yeah. What else? You got anything better to do? No. I don't. Yeah. Train on Saturday. You, do you train on Saturdays? I do, yeah. What, what time? 12.30. I mean... You might be, like, low on sleep if you do it on Friday, but you still could do it on Friday and make it to train if, if you want to. 
Yeah, I would like. Yeah, to I don't do want you to like burn one out one day a week. Yeah, just like do, a do, Sunday. It on, do it on Saturday. Do it on Saturday. You don't want to do it on Sunday. Sunday because then you wake up Monday. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do it on Sunday unless you're just all about the money. Do it, but you do this on a Saturday. Yeah, dude, it's good money. Yeah, it's good pocket change. And you got like you got your bills and all your you got any debt? Mm. Dude, you could, you're twenty you're twenty one years old. That pocket money could just go into buying Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. Or that could go into just investing it, and you don't even have to touch it. And then, like, 10 years from now, all of a sudden, now you have a, pr- a bunch of appreciating assets that's just yours. Or I can just invest in my in my training, like, my in my recovery or, 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 or other sort of training. You could you do that. It. You could use that money for whatever you want to yeah. use it. You're right. You could, just, you could use it for whatever you want because you're 21 years old. The and it's there. And there. it's there. And take it's, it. And it's there. Take it. Yeah, take it. It's a fun job. You'd like it. And, and I'm like, work out, and I can network with people. You can network with a lot of bar owners, and especially if I'm like, yo, this is my. New, well, I mean, it's probably gonna be Emilio first because he's doing it yeah, right now. But yeah, either yeah. way, I'm just like, let's say I get another cab, right? I'm like, yo, this is my new rider, Christian. He's an up and coming MMA fighter. He's gonna go pro. He's gonna do this and that. Like, I know a lot of people. That'll I think it really help you good. get some sponsors. Yeah, it can, for sure. It, it's just a, it it'll could, open up the doors in a lot of ways. It could potentially open up some doors. Um, one thing though is that we'll definitely talk about. it. We should talk about. It. I think you should do this if you think it's something you could handle. Though. Yeah. Like I don't want you to do this job. That's the only get... thing is like I'm scared that like, I I don't want to commit to it. And don't. It me be like. Well, oh, that's shit. the thing about this job. You don't have to. It's a free fucking spirit job. You do this when you want to do it. You don't see me young at you because you're not doing yeah, it, right? I'm just, just like, like, hey, bro, it's here. Take it. Hey, it's here. There's an opportunity. Just let me know if you want to get this print. If you want to get this going, because I'm reserving this for you. And I'm like, oh, okay, so you're just not you're not ready yet. That's fine. I'm just gonna ask other people. Yeah. I'm not yelling at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm and not you're still gonna me. ask me. You yeah, know. you can do this when you're ready. The do job this, will be there. Do this when you're ready to do it. Right. That that's all I'm saying. Do it when do it whenever you're ready. Um, <clears throat> but what was I gonna say to you, man? Um, don't do this if you if you feel like. Make sure this is a job that you can mentally handle. Because I've seen a lot of people that get jobs in the night in the bar industry and the service industry that. It actually fucks them up training too. Yeah, it burns them out in their own. It burns them out. It fucks their schedule up. They party too much. They fuck too many girls and, and that's do why whatever. I quit my job, you know, because like it was messing with my training. I would miss twelve thirty. I would miss yeah. a bunch of sessions. I'm like, nah. Like I'm gonna fight somebody one day who's training full time. Who's I living mean, with his mom and dad? Yeah. Doesn't doesn't have shit going on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I need to, to be doing the same. And you need to be doing the, the same. same hours. You need to be doing the same thing. How nervous do you get before fights? I'm not nervous. I'm really calm and composed. No, I, but I mean like weeks leading up. I'm not talking about Jersey oh, fights. Oh, weeks. Yeah. Weeks leading up, uh, I do get really nervous. I, I overthink the fight a lot. I I obsess over my opponents. I'm constantly looking at their Instagram, constantly looking at their Facebook, constantly seeing their work schedule. Like I, I, so I'm that, trying that's, to... Yeah, that's the one thing that I don't miss about the shit. No? Is like... But just, I like that. I like No, searching. but like I would just have anxiety Yeah, constantly. the anxiety the, Just like every day you wake up fucking feeling nervous and just... You have this feeling of terror. Like, oh, and it's, it's like this feeling real. of terror it doesn't coming. go away until you just do a monster workout. Mm-hmm. And you're nervous like, oh, fuck, I gotta do this, this horrible workout. And then for like an hour, you feel a little bit less terrified. Yeah. Right? And then like you, you got like, oh, fuck, now I gotta go spar with these fucking animals. Now I'm nervous for like two hours. It's in my fucking brain. Um, it's affecting how I communicate. All right, got a, did, did, got, got sparring out of the way. All right, now I feel better. Now I got to do this again tomorrow. And yeah. this, the, you feel like this fucking knot in your stomach for like a, two months, yeah, a month at a time. All day long. But then you know what? The, if, you, if you go about that process, right, while you're getting ready for your fight, once the fight comes, you're like, well, you still are nervous and you still feel horrible. Yeah. But it's like, well, it, it, it's – you just created a baseline where you've been feeling like this for two months, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Do you know what, like, does that make sense? It does. And, and bro, like, everything's a rep. So, like, like I've I've had four fights in four months, so I've had the feeling four times back to back to back to back. And it's been back to back to back. I haven't had time to, like, sit there and, like, think about it. So, like, it honestly, like, worked out. Like, being so active. It, it helped. It probably helps a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's helped out so much. Like, yeah, the first fight, I was so nervous. Like, I don't know what's about to happen. I'm fighting a grown man. He's trying to take my head off in front of my family. Yeah. And but every fight is getting a little, little easier. Like the last fight, WFC was on a really big stage, Reed Arena, a lot of people there, big lights, and I really wasn't that nervous for it. I was nervous leading up, of course, but in the back, I felt <coughs> like I belonged. Good. Yeah. I mean, I saw that fight. That was a tough fight. Yeah. Um, what, did people? What was the reaction in the crowd afterwards? Oof. Uh, crowd loved it. 
I love the the teammates' reaction, man. My teammates were so nervous and scared for me because they saw they were there live. So yeah, they, they were feeling that. Even fight. if you had lost the fight, nobody would have been mad at you. Like you get, you really uh, did your best yeah. in that fight. Like you did, you Bro, gave everything you had in that fight. I don't care if I yeah. win or lose. I, I don't care. Like I, I like to tell myself. I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I get knocked out. I don't give a fuck if I get front kicked. Like, dude, this is a fight. Shit's gonna happen. You know, like. Me going out there and putting my body on the line is, is enough. Like, I'm trying to lead from the front. I'm trying to show these guys that, like, hey, we can come out here and compete back-to-back. -back. Like, we train way harder than anybody in this state. You know what I'm saying? Like, our MMA team is the only one that's actually training MMA. And so, like, these guys need to understand that, like, we can come out there and we can compete any weekend and perform and get finishes. Numbers don't lie. Look at our look like how many how, how long has it been? We, nine months as a team. We got three champs. Three champs. And then you are about to be another. Yeah. Soon to you, be. You should be a fourth one, right? Yeah. Like, and then there's more like Dallas. Dallas is gonna be a champ soon. Dallas. Shock is gonna good. be a champ soon. Dallas is a fucking nightmare. <sighs> nightmare. Like the his striking is relentless. Top notch. That that's like that guy could be a pro boxer or a pro kickboxer. Fuck yeah. yeah like and his last is. fight, he finished the dude with ground and pound. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah, because that's that guy scary. because the guy couldn't handle that guy striking. And so we tried to take his, him down and yeah, end up on and the his, bottom. Well, yeah, and Dallas's wrestling has gotten a lot better. A lot better. So now it's like, oh shit, you can't just be like, well, I'm just gonna go shoot on this guy and no. just like you can't do that anymore. No, you're gonna get stuffed and you're gonna get punched, and then if you want to stand up with him, you're gonna get whopped. And he's so fucking lanky and whatever. And he's, like, he's he, just, dude, he's so confident and he's so calm. Thing is, you would never know. You look at that guy in the street. You just, this is like some doofy looking white. Nice guy. This doofy looking yeah. white dude. Like He'd head kick your ass. Yeah, imagine like somebody trying to jump that guy, or trying to like rob that guy, or start a fight with him like at a bar. That's a bad move. Imagine that's that a shit. bad. Move. Holy fuck. That's a bad move. His technique too. He'd just sit you down the right. One way. shot. One, one shot. shot. <laughs> and he would. And he would just like pretend like nothing. He's so fluid. He'd Boom. snap it. Boom. He'd be like, oh, it. oh shit, my bad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. He's quite a good teacher. He's such a good oh, teacher. Oh man, I, dude, I learned so much from him. His, the way he can just break techniques down makes it so easy for everyone. And he's an athlete. Yeah, and he's an at and he's athlete. He's like six four. Coachable, bro. He li fuck. he Im he like literally implies every technique you teach him. He apply it right there in the live situation. We got a good fucking squad. Good it's squad. A good solid squad. squad it's really dude. good. The guys are really. Our good. team is 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 coming up for sure. And, and it's fun the way people train. People, like, with the way everybody spars, they spar, like... Because I've been in other gyms where people spar a lot harder. Yeah. People don't... People spar, like, at a good pace, but no one really, like, spars... Everything, it's a lot... It's very controlled with how people... Yeah, other. it's really we're, controlled we're with how everybody spars. We yeah, drill yeah. hard, and, and we're intense, and we get a good workout, but, like, I'm not trying to fuck that dude up. The like, gym I was at before 10th Planet, like, the sparring sessions were fucking brutal. Yeah, tough. Yeah. Like, knockouts. People not knockouts, but, like, I, I've, I've gotten dropped in those sessions before... Like with head kicks and shit like yeah. that, and like, like a, little, a little dizzy after like a right hand, you're like dude, that was yeah, so hard. you're feeling like you lost some brain. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't feel that way sparring at ten pace. Nah, dude, everything's yeah. super controlled. We care about each other. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's it's not that like we still cared about each other at our at our old gym, but the pace was like yeah. it was a high pace. It's like, just the team. It's like yeah. we're a team. It's not like we're a gym, you know. Yeah, we're or we're, yeah. we're a team, and we grow together. You know, we. We f we travel to fight together and, and hey, where's your next fight at? Um, San Antonio Cowboy Dance Hall. Oh, nice. Okay, I've heard good spot, good things about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be sick. It's on UFC Fight Pass, dude. I know. Yeah, it's, that's exciting. Who, yeah. So who are you fighting? Talk about this guy, Brandon <laughs> Gutierrez. I know he's a purple belt. Oh, you're fighting that kid from fucking um, Southside. No, isn't that kid from um, oh, um, 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 uh, BFF? No, that's a different Brandon Gutierrez. All right. I don't even think he fights MMA. That's what I'm saying. I was like, wait. That guy's a yeah. Jits guy. Yeah. I was like, wait, it's a different funny. Brandon Gutierrez. Okay, okay. Yeah. This guy's from Southside, San Antonio, um, some gym. And um, he's, I know he's a Jits guy, and I know he he comes out fast. Every one of his fights. He's had two fights finish in the first round, and he had his last fight that he lost in 40 seconds. So he's never made it out of the second round. I don't think he's going to be able to keep the pace. And I, let's see how he reacts standing up from round two. You know, he's yeah. never been there before. He's never been around two. How, what's his record? Two and one. And he's never been around. Wow, that's not good. Not good. I mean, it's, it's whatever, but it's just. Yeah, he's it makes you think he's that. never been tested. He's never been tested. Never been tested. He's been finished fast, and it's like. And it's, that's not good. That doesn't mean you were tested. No, that just means that you came out explosive and got caught. Yeah, or you're just not good at handling adversity. Yeah. When somebody catches you. Or when, or because his last two fights, he he finished the dude with knockout. So he just came out there and just threw hands and knocked the dude out. So uh, I think he's going to come out there, look to throw hands, and he's not going to find success. How's his wrestling? Freak out. Not very good wrestling. They train in a gi, bro. Like, what is that?
Ooh. I don't even know what a gee is. Yeah, don't worry about that. It's, 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 that's, yeah. that's some commoner stuff right there. <laughs> some pleb shit? Yeah, he's going to be looking for grips and shit, and that's they're not going to be there. Hilarious. Um, what, that's tough. You planning on going pro soon? Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I want to be super patient with my amateur career, especially the way the game's going now. Man, these Dagestanians, these dudes, I got to be ready for those guys. So I'm going to take like, the mic, the mic. I'm going to take like a long time as an Ami. I want, I want to win something big as an Ami. I want a big record. I want a lot of finishes. I want amateur titles. I want to be a double champ. I want to win the Tiger Muay Thai competition. I want to fight for the IMAF and, and medal for them. And then I want to turn pro. So maybe like 24, 25. And you're 21 now. Good. That, that's the right attitude. Yeah. That is the right attitude. Um, Maybe do some like pro jiu-jitsu matches too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get like, a purple belt. Have a purple belt before you... Take some kickboxing fights. Yeah. Have a purple belt before you go out Definitely. There. Maybe even a brown. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, because there's been a lot of really good fight. There's been a lot of really good amateur fighters. There's a whole bunch of stories about a bunch of really good amateur fighters. And then they turn pro. And then they just... Fall off. They fall off. Yeah. And, they, and dude, and it's so important when you turn pro, you have to build that record. You have to have a winning record. Yeah. Like uh, Robert, that's an example. Yeah. It's tough. Cool guy, really awesome guy, and he's a fucking, that's a motherfucker right there. Dude, motherfucker. But, you know. Um, it gets tough as pros. Yeah, you know? it's a different level. Like, that, like, it's a different level. And I, I've seen all his pro fights, too. And I want to get him on, and we're going to talk about this also. Yeah. But I've seen all his pro fights. And I see his amateur fights where he's just laying people out, arm barring people in, like, 30 seconds. Yeah. Like, he's really, guy's really good. Really good. You know? But it's like, but that all level. of a sudden, dude, all of a sudden, it's like, yo, that Division One wrestler, you're not able to. Now you're fighting a Division One wrestler. Yeah, you or know, you're not, fighting, now you're fighting uh, black belt, that black karate, belt in jujitsu, jitsu like, yeah, yeah, it's a specialist. Yeah, like, yeah, now it's like, oh shit, you're fucking this dude up for a whole round, but you get caught with a triangle or a guillotine in round two or three. It's like. You know, it when sucks. you yeah, you know, when you go pro, that shouldn't happen. If that ha if that starts happening, those mistakes to you, can't. You can't make those mistakes. No, because that determines you eating. Like yeah. when you're when you're an amateur, you're going to school. This is you um, building a pedigree. This is you getting Instagram famous. This is you doing stuff that people are like, oh shit, this guy's cool. This is awesome. Yeah, you're a fighter. You know, you're my fucking. Now it's the time dude. to make yeah, the mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. But like once you're once you're a pro, you're fighting to eat. Like that's your that's your food, and like all of a sudden it's like. You you and you're fighting another you get, guy who yeah, wants, who wants that as well. Yeah, so like you know you're, you're you're fighting some dude and it's like, oh shit! If you got a, if you have a slow start to your career, your career becomes that much harder to to um, come back from. It becomes that much harder to actually have a lucrative career as a fighter. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that like understand like when you're an amateur, go have fun, make your mistakes, just take as much fights as you can, be, be as experienced as possible if that's what you want to do. But if you're gonna go pro, dude, uh it's a business and you got to make sure you got a manager that's going to match you up in a way that will get you the right, get you the right record, get you the right fights, get you the right opportunities and get you everything you need so that when you leave, you have something that's yours. Yeah. yeah. It, that's why it's so important as an Ami to have your sponsors already as an Ami before you go pro, have your coaches before you go pro, have your system before you go pro. You have everything. Yeah. And then when you turn pro, it's there. It's not like you turn pro and then you find all that stuff. No, yeah, I think you're you're really on the right path. I'm I'm loving I'm loving this. I'm so happy that this is your first podcast, right? It is my first. I'm excited, time man. This is your yeah. first. This is your first podcast, dude. So, dude, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for making time to do this, bro. Thank you for having Fuck me. Fuck yeah, man. dude. Anyway, um, tell us about how we can get a hold of you, and then we'll uh, wrap it up. Uh, yeah, on Instagram, uh, Christian and um, I mean, that's pretty you got Twitter. Cool. You got any YouTube? You got any other fucking? I don't. Oh yeah, you can you can look at my fights on YouTube. Just look up Christian Ammons MMA. Um, Twitter is just at Christian Ammons, and then Facebook is Christian Ammons as well. That's All right. Hey, thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah, Christian Ammons, you. ladies and gentlemen.